And I'm here with Michael Miglis. How you doing, Michael? Hi, Andrew. Good. How are you? Good. Um, just wanted to thank you for coming on the podcast. I'm excited to, to hear about your story getting a uh, micro card recently. But for those that may not know you, do you want to give uh, just a quick intro on yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, so my name is Michael. Um, I'm from Greece originally. I spent a lot of my time in London. So my background has been in data engineering. I used to build big data solutions for companies like P&G and GM, uh, but I always had this uh, passion for entrepreneurship. Um, I started a company around five years ago um, in the fashion tech space. So it was a enterprise SaaS, which is still going on. Um, and um, I've been always passionate about startups. And in the middle of my journey, I thought, um, you know, I found this amazing platform, Macro Acquire, and I thought it would be a good challenge to build and sell something there. And uh, yeah, I'm, here I am. <laughs> nice. So for everyone listening, I Michael was telling me the, so I don't know a company, Mike, Michael had acquired. So I told him, don't tell me let's get this live on the podcast. <laughs> so Michael, what was the company that um, you had micro acquired? What did it do? What problem did it solve? All that fun stuff. Yeah. And um, the funny story is when I, when I decided to uh, build something for micro acquired, I had no idea what it was going to be. So it was like, I'm going to spend some time finding a, a niche a problem, solve it, uh, build something, and then in the end, sold it. And uh, uh, the app was basically a Shopify app. Um, and it was solving the problem of uh, merchants or Shopify store owners installing uh, Google Analytics onto their um, shop, which could be a bit complicated if you're not technical. Um, so it would just make the process very simple, just one copy paste and you set it and forget it. So it was a pixel um, pixel installer for Google Analytics on Shopify stores. Nice. I like that. Just nice, simple, clear to understand problem. You'd be surprised at how many startups we see at MicroQuire where we look at them and they're really good, but we're like, what do you do? What? <laughs> uh, so when you when you see the newsletter, actually, that's usually us kind of doing them some help in terms of exploring clearly explain that I can clearly understand the problem that you were solving there. Um, I guess my next question would be, so, you know, you, you decided to sell, what made you um, want to sell in the first place? Um, so initially um, I think it was the whole idea that I wanted to build something, grow it in a certain state and sell it. Um, so it was a journey from the beginning to the end. So selling was part of the um, uh, completion of the journey. Uh, it was uh it was at a point that um, I had a lot of going on in my life with my current startup um, that uh, enterprise as a uh, big company right now. Um, so it was getting really busy. Uh, the app came in the lockdown uh, kind of period that everyone had some free time, uh, picked up baking for a while. Then uh, <laughs> then I tried nice. to build a microsas. And um, yeah, at some point, Shopify was um, was doing some changes on the, on the, on the authentication. And I had to spend like a couple of days working on the app. And at some point I was like, okay, I, I need to sell this um, and move on uh, and focus on my current startup. Nice. That makes total sense. Well, congrats on um, the, the larger startup as well. And then it's always fun to, you know, have a side project or just build something. Yeah. I, I can relate to that more than you know. Um, <laughs> but for those listening, focus on one startup. <laughs> um Anyways, uh, so you you decide to list on MicroQuire. Um, I'm assuming um, multiple buyers reach out. Um, do you want to walk me through how that process went and how you finally landed on you know the buyer that ended up acquiring your Shopify app? Yeah. Um, so after I got some some traction, as I said, it was the the plan to sell. Uh, obviously. Uh, one of the problems was it was a new app, so it didn't have like a lot of history. Um, it wasn't running for 12 months. Um, I believe I, I listed it after three months. So uh, a lot of the buyers uh, wasn't meeting their criteria. Uh, at first, uh, obviously, I had kind of uh, overestimated the value of the of the app uh, being a new app with uh, low record, no, low traction. Um, I kind of uh, set it at a high price point. Um, then I just um, uh, actually I read the report of uh, the, uh, the evaluations of Shopify apps. I believe it was 2.7x the ARR. Um, uh, at the end, I sold for three something. And when I lowered the price, I got more qualified buyers. Um, and the whole process was uh, super, super simple, to be honest. Um, so 
uh, the buyers would just ask for a few financials, some screenshots, um, then we would see if they it would meet their um, kind of like investment thesis or uh, acquisition thesis. Um, and yeah, just uh, at the end, we had one, two calls with the actual buyer and a last call where I handed everything over and it was really smooth. Nice. Well, congrats. Um, I guess my next question would be, in terms of from the time you listed on MicroCore to actually finding the buyer, how long did that process take? I think that the process took around uh, three months, um, but I think that was only because at first I had said like a high price and it was just three months old up. Um, but once it got uh, some traction, it was uh, the six month period, uh, I got more qualified buyers uh, and I ended up selling. Nice. Yeah, I would say that's probably the number one reason we see startups not sell on microcar is when they just price way too high. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, what you do is you, uh, you know, as buyers are going through microcar, they quickly will skip over it and you'll lose that initial interest. Um, so reading the multiples report, I'm glad you did that. Um, if you're in line with those valuations, your buyer interest is based on our data. It's like two to three, four times higher, if not more. So um, good job on that. And then I guess um, uh, my next question would be, how did you transfer all the assets over? I know Shopify is a little bit easier in terms of just kind of, did you just kind of hand over the keys? Did you have a Zoom call? Did you have like a list of all the items that you were going to transfer? How did how, how did that part work? Yeah, I think um, because I had, uh, when I went into this kind of like uh, journey or challenge, um, I had in mind that I'm going to sell it at some point. So from the beginning, I had structured the entire infrastructure like that. So I had like separate AWS account, separate Shopify account, uh, separate uh, hosting, uh, web hosting. So everything had a separate account. So I would just hand over the accounts to the person that uh, actually acquired them. Um, And I think that saved me a lot of hustle and time because usually all my projects are under one umbrella <laughs> and it's it's a mess. Um, but that really helped. Um, so the whole process was easy. We jump, jumped on a Zoom call. Um, he sent over some terms that I think he he was the first buyer as well. So he found the terms on uh, Macro Acquire. Uh, we went through escrow. So it was kind of just uh, a journey that we were discovering the process, uh, both of us. Uh, so it was really smooth actually. Very nice. Yeah, I would say that's probably another, um, maybe not a mistake, but just something to think about if you're looking to eventually sell your business is I can't even tell you how many times I've talked to founders who maybe have, you know, one AWS account with multiple different projects or startups in it. Then you have to pull it out and do all this extra work. And just being able to kind of hand over the keys is so much easier for both you and both the buyer too. Also in terms of just building confidence, like, because when you move something, you got to make sure it works and it's new environment, et cetera, all that fun stuff. Um, so good job on that. Um, and good job on using escrow too. Um, I, I can't recommend people that acquire stuff without using escrow service, I think are, are crazy. So it luckily, crazy. yeah, it, it's just a, an unnecessary risk. Luckily, we don't see that too often, but um, you know, some people can be fast and loose. Um, I, I guess now I'm wondering... Um, you know, are you able to maybe talk about, I guess, you know, with founders, you know, looking to sell their business based on you going through the process successfully, um, is there any like tips you would give new founders looking to sell their business? Like as a, because I really like how you came in prepared, your accounts were separated, um, you had a realistic valuation, maybe I'm giving all the tips away, um, but <laughs> but if you had, you um, you know, any tips to share in terms of how to maximize your chances of being acquired? Um, what would those be? I probably just gave uh, you like five. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you you you, you did a, a good intro there. Um, I believe also um, how you handle potential buyers um, is really important. Like being honest, being upfront, having everything ready, um, you know, respond on time. I think all these kind of uh, things help potential buyers see that, you know, um, you will be honest through the process. You will be there to support if needed. So um, we build a good report with um, with an interested buyer. 
and I think that's helped the process a lot because you know there's so many apps right now and uh, being able to have a good cooperation between the buyer and the seller is really important in the, in the process and of course having a data room as well I think that's important uh, especially when you're uh, have a bigger company, having everything ready, like your PL statements, everything that a potential acquirer might ask, um, that would definitely uh, help with the process, I believe. Yeah, I completely agree, especially on the PL. That's usually, depending on the size of the business, I think once you get into the six, you know, seven, you know, million dollar acquisitions, a PL is absolutely required for larger buyers to really understand the health of your business. Um, so that's, that's really, really great advice. I guess, you know, given that you built, you know, multiple startups, are there any sort of like tips you would give to, you know, startup founders just looking to build a startup? Are there any sort of, um, you know, themes that you, you know, believe in or any sort of quotes that are your favorites? Um, yeah, I think um, a good tip would be to, do a lot of market research before you go into building something. Um, usually because I come from an engineering background, I might get excited from this idea that I have and the technology is really exciting and there might not be a market for it. Well, another very, very simple and stupid thing like the app I, I built might actually have a market for it. Um, and you know, you might not enjoy it that much, but once you're getting the first customers in, um, that will be uh, that will be a good payoff. So I would definitely recommend, especially to all the engineers out there, do your market research. Make sure you have a go-to-market plan and uh, make sure there's an actual market uh, out there. Hopefully, a competitor too. Um, I would never go into building something without a competitor. Uh, trying to educate the market. Um, yeah, I think that that will save you a lot of time and a lot of headache later. I, I couldn't agree more. I always say if there's no competitor in your market, that's a really bad sign. <laughs> yeah. And you're right. Educating a market is very, very expensive because um, one of my favorite business quotes is, uh, what is it? It's um, one of the hardest things to do in business is to change consumer habits. So people are so used to doing something a certain way and your business does it completely different. Um, I'm trying to think of a company that actually did this and it worked out. But anyways, if you're coming to the market with something that you're right, like they've never heard about, there's no competitors, um, it's not clear what problem it's solving, and you have to just educate, 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 you know, you're going to need a lot of time and a lot of capital. So I, I like that. And I do agree. I think competition also just breeds improvement and kind of fun too to have competition in markets. Yeah. Plus you, it gives you ideas on what, what to do, what to avoid, what to do better. Um, so um, it's definitely good to have competitors. They'll push you forward. Uh, you'll push them forward. So it's going to be good for everyone. Yeah, I completely agree. All right. I got, I got one last question now. I'll let you run my goal. So um, I've been asking this random question just for fun. Cause I think it's funny on every podcast, but if you were stuck on an Island and you could only bring one thing, it could be a book, it can be a tool. Um, what would that one item be? Mm -hmm. If it was an island with good waves, I would bring a surfboard for sure. Ah, I, I, mean. think, <laughs> I think that would make me have a lot of fun in the island and I wouldn't mind staying there. Um, you, have you seen the movie um, Castaway? Uh, not, is it Castaway with Tom Hanks? He, he gets stuck on an island? Yeah, with Wilson, right? <laughs> I literally thought that exact same thing because if you watch the movie again, the waves are actually really good. Yeah, They're, yeah. I'm like, this guy needs a surfboard and he, he wouldn't want to leave. Exactly. And you're set there and you wouldn't mind for it uh, at all. Um, I do yeah. surf sometimes here in the island and uh, it's um, it clears your head. It's, meditate. it's like a meditation for me. So I, I would recommend it to everyone. Yeah, I, I grew up surfing, um, so I, I can relate to that. It's it's probably the only way for me to go anywhere without my phone. Um, <laughs> even though I, I, I believe the new iPhone is completely waterproof, but still. Um, all right, Michael, well, uh, pleasure speaking with you. Thanks so much for um, sharing all this, and, and congrats again on the acquisition. I'm rooting for you, man. Thank you, Andrew, and uh, thank you for making it possible. It wouldn't be possible without Macro Acquire, and it did give me the inspiration to just build something, sell it. Uh, just, it's a big market for anyone listening uh, for new ideas. Um, so, um, yeah, thank you for making it happen. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, cheers, Michael. All right, bye, Andrew. 